Well, it's time to get this cleaned up so we can get some of this planted. So if you've seen one of our last videos where uh, last weekend we got hit with a frost or almost a freeze and it killed a lot of our uh, vegetable garden. So we're trying to get it cleaned up and we're going to plant some garlic today. So come along and we'll get this cleaned up and show you how to plant garlic. So one of our first things we're going to do is we're going to get all this stuff. The, there was some grass that was just laying around here from when I did some weed eating and plus all the other vegetables we pulled out and just laid on this black mat. We're gonna put all these over in our compost. We got some other plants over here that we need to put in our compost pile. Once we get all that done, we're gonna go through and empty out all of our containers that have worked really, really well for us this year, but they have great super soil in them. So we're gonna come back and fill in at least the bed that we're gonna put the okra, uh, not the okra, and that had the okra, uh, this one, and then where the tomatoes were. Uh, we lost a lot of dirt when we're pulling up the tomatoes. And I think after that, we'll be good to go to, to plant some garlic. So we just have to get busy. Stop talking. All right, so we got everything cleaned up for the most part. It's not perfect, but it's good enough for now. We got all of the dirt that we needed to move. We got some in here and some other beds. So now it's time to plant the garlic. We have two different types of garlic today, and I have one more that I'm waiting on to come in. That's, that's going to be, an, I think it's called elephant ear, and that's a really big clove garlic. And my dad grew that this year, and he said he loved it. So hopefully we get some of that. I like to get some huge garlic, because we use garlic in everything. So. But I got two different types. Both of them are Italian something. And I have no, this is Italian Luciano. That sounds right to me. And then uh, early Italian. I got these from the Burpee website. And both of these say they grow well in the south. And since we live pretty close to the south, they should grow pretty well for us. All right, so you take the, the whole bulb. And then, as you can see, there's different cloves kind of sticking out. And really, all you're going to need to do is I'm just gonna pull those off and just kind of stick them in, on here for, for now just to break these up. So all I'm doing is just trying to get the, the cloves pulled apart. You don't wanna strip all of the outside layer of the clove. You just wanna kind of break them apart. And if there's any little ones like this one, 
that's just going to go inside, get cleaned up and, and cooked with. So when we were undoing some of the garlic, we ran across one that looks like you can tell it's, it's no good. It's kind of looked like it's halfway been dehydrated and you can see it's kind of spoiled on one end. So this is just going to go into the compost. You wouldn't want to eat it or plant it, but that's really all you have to do with the bulbs. And then once you get all the cloves broke up, then we're going to plant them and let's show you what we're going to do with that. All right, so on the uh, garlic clove, there's a bottom. That's where the roots are going to be growing out of. Then you have a top and that's where the green leafy stuff will be coming out. So you're going to want to plant it in this orientation where this is kind of pointing up and this is pointing down and you want to do it about knuckle deep. So kind of like that far in the, into the dirt and then you'll cover it up. I already have a hole here a little bit and you want to plant it just like that. And you want to plant these about four inches apart from each other, but it's four inch on center. So it's about right here where I'll do another one. And then I'll do another one. And then I'll put another one in right there. And then what I'll do is I'll move up four inches again. And then once we come back in, we'll put one in the middle, like about right there. So that doubles up your amount of garlic that you can put in to your raised bed. So if you're worried about uh, space concerns and those kind of things, you should have plenty of room if you do this. And um, we didn't have any problems with it last year. All right, so I have my main rows, and now I'm starting off in the diagonal positions. And just pointing that root system portion down. Just like that. And then we still have some more to plant. So once we're done, we're, we'll just kind of, just like this and just kind of cover that up loosely like that and just water it and let that grow. And now since we're getting cooler temperatures, uh, it's gonna allow those roots to kind of get set. And then over winter, when it starts getting really cold, we'll actually put some, some mulch over this, some probably some old goat bedding that we have. We can go over this, it's cold manure for it. So that can go over that and it'll stay like that all winter. And then come early spring, these things just shoot up and start uh, producing some cloves for us. Well, folks, we've got all of our garlic planted that we have right now. Like I said earlier, we have some more coming. So once the beets come up, we'll plant all of that here. So this whole bed will be nothing but garlic. That's awesome because we love garlic. And they're pretty easy to grow from what we found out last year. We didn't so. have any trouble. We planted ours really late last yeah. year. We, we were late to the game. Yep. Um, but they still grew really well. The, the cloves were just not huge. Yep. So we're hoping that we're ahead of the curve now. This time we're planting at a better time and we'll have a bigger, more prolific garlic for uh, this spring, summer. Yeah, and, and, and I think these are soft neck cloves or garlic. So even when we harvest them, maybe we can braid them and store them that way and uh, make yeah. them look all pretty for you. You can braid them. I was gonna say, do you know how to braid? No. Okay, I'll braid them. That sounds fair. Yeah, I, I, I braid this these two hairs together <laughs> right here. Yeah, come on, I don't braid. But. Uh, <laughs> But uh, one other thing that, that we just wanted to give you guys a little insight. One of the videos that are going to be coming up here pretty soon is we're going to build a, a prototype for our, um, our kind of our, our high tunnel, low tunnel uh, scenario that we're going to use on this bed right here, actually. With our lettuce. With our lettuce for the winter. Um, we were talking about it, and we are seeing two completely different projects. In our heads. Yeah, yeah. And we cannot talk the same language sometimes. Uh -uh. So, so we're going to take that little one we made. And we're going to kind of the little planter box that we yep. have. We're going to take that one in and we're going to prototype this greenhouse topper, this low tunnel thing yep. we've got going because we want it to hinge and open and shut during the winter. We also want to be able to remove the whole topper and set it aside so that in the winter, these raised beds can be like greenhouses. And in the spring and summer, they're just garden beds. Yep. So, I mean, we have them. It, it seems we're like a good, a good thing to do. But yep. again, like I said, we don't always speak the same language on projects, so yeah. oftentimes it resorts to someone fashioning a prototype out of paper. So. 
Yeah, and, and the thing is, I'm not a very good drawler, so <laughs> I cannot draw well at all. So I can't draw it out and kind of, you know, put it in perspective for her. And she's a visual person that way. Yeah, and I need it to just, see it. And it just doesn't. So I, I'm just going to have to just put it together and say, okay, this is what I was talking about. And she's going to, that's awesome. That's what I was thinking about usually what happens. Yeah, but we're, we find out we're usually more on the same page than we realize. We're just not talking the same language. Did you guys have that problem? Anybody else? Is it just us? Is it just us? I doubt it's just us. But I think it's good, though, because it, it makes us really talk through and work through the whole project. We find the faults oftentimes before we get started, or in the prototyping, we find the faults. Yeah. So I think it's not a bad thing. Yeah, so coming up here pretty soon, you'll see that video. And, of course, if you haven't seen us on Facebook or Instagram, those links will be down below. Every Friday night, we have a live stream at 7 p.m. Central Time, so come join that. Uh, we have great times, good laughs, and uh, have some great fellowship with everybody out there. For sure. And from our homestead to yours, have a blessed day, and we'll catch you on the next video. Bye. Bye.